guys. You know, there's nothing that smells any better than fresh bread baking in the oven. But I'm going to make some breakfast bread, something that I can slice up and uh, put in a toaster, something really hearty, something really good for breakfast. Because we get up so early in the morning, sometimes you just need something quick. But, so I'm going to make some cinnamon raisin bread. I think it'll be good. It's an easy recipe. Uh, the longest time you'll spend on it is probably just letting it uh, your bread for a couple hours, but that'll be it. But I want to make some today, and I thought I'd just bring it along because I hadn't made a video in a while. But we're just busy people. But anyways, it's going to be good. Um, it makes three loaves, so you can put a couple loaves in the freezer and just take it out as you need it. So y'all hang around. Let's get started on this really good cinnamon raisin bread. Now, what I've done is the recipe, this is one and a half cups of milk that I scalded. Take that back, I didn't scald this milk. <laughs> this is a whole different recipe. But you do want to warm your milk to look warm. You don't want to scald it or bring it to a boil. You just want to bring it to, it's just kind of getting some little bubbles around the edge and then you know it's warm enough. So that's one and a half cups of just warm milk. And I've let it sit here on the counter and I've let it cool. And this is one cup of your warm water with two packages of your active dry yeast. And I let it sit for about mm, probably 10 minutes and you can see how it's, it's proof really well. And actually too, I put just a little sprinkling of sugar. That sugar seems to help your, your yeast activate just a little bit better. So I'm going to put my yeast in my, my mixing bowl. I'm going to make sure I've got all my yeast in here. This yeast really, I never seem to have any problem with this yeast. It's Hodgen Mills, Hodgen Mills, Hodgen Mills, and it's really good yeast. So I've got my, my yeast in there, my water. I'm going to put three eggs. And you can see I've got my paddle on here to help mix my ingredients. And when I start putting my flour in, I'll put my, my dough hook on. So I'm going to put three eggs. And you know, uh, any bread that's made that's got eggs in it is such a, it's such a rich, really good bread. And this makes three loaves. So we got our eggs in there. Three eggs, and I need, let's see, how much sugar? I need a half a cup of sugar that I'm gonna put in here. You need a half a cup or a stick of butter. Soften, it needs to be soft. It don't need to be melted, it just needs to be really soft. And I need my salt. I've got a teaspoon of salt. And I'm going to go ahead and put a whole cup of raisins in here. Now, you don't have to put a whole cup. I mean, if you're just, it's going to make three loaves. So really, a whole cup of raisins it really isn't a whole lot. Now, if you was making just one loaf, a whole cup would sound like a lot. But this is going to make three loaves. So I'm going to turn my mixture on, and I'm going to let this mix just a little bit. Now this recipe calls for eight cups of just regular all-purpose flour. Um, there's probably no reason that you couldn't use bread flour. Bread flour is, what it's gonna do is make a, a lighter bread. But just your all-purpose flours is fine with this recipe and most, a lot of bread recipes. So you just want this to mix really well. Now, I didn't melt my butter, so it's going to, you know, still have little pieces of butter in there. But like I said, it's just, it's just room temperature. Okay, now I'm going 
gonna take my warm milk and you still, you got to make sure that it's not scalding hot because it'll cook your eggs. And I'm gonna turn this back on low and I'm just gonna slowly pour my warm milk in here and let it mix. Y'all, I have to, and I'm sure there's a lot of people besides me, but my blender here, my kitchen aid, excuse me, <coughs> I've had this thing for 20 years. So that tells you how good a product these kitchen aid mixers are. I'd like to have a new one, and probably when I do, it'll be a little bit bigger than this one. But I'll tell you, this thing has been through it. I use this thing for everything. Okay, I've got my milk in there. So I've got my milk, I've got my yeast, I've got my eggs, my sugar, my salt, my butter, my raisins. And it calls for eight cups of flour. And I'm just gonna do this slowly. I'm gonna put the eight cups in there and I'm just gonna throw it all in there and uh, mix it up. And first I'm gonna put my dough hook on. I almost forgot about that. If you don't have a kitchen aid, if you don't have a mixer, you can do this by hand. I do a lot of my breads by hand. Okay, I'm going to turn it on low, and I'm just going to start adding my flour. Now, adding eight cups of flour is going to take a while. I don't know how many of y'all love making bread. I love to make bread when I've got time. And usually on the weekend, a lot of times I do, and sometimes I don't. Sometimes the weekend I have to use for getting caught up on everything else. But my bread, my flour, I do use organic flour. Um, I have to tell you though, back when I was raising my kids on the farm, you know, everything was made from scratch, but we didn't know anything much about organic flour. We would buy it in bulk or whatever, but it was always just either WR or gold metal or whatever. It's never organic. Uh, people just didn't talk about it much back then. But I do know that a lot of our pesticides and stuff are um, used on our wheat and corn. And if I'd have known it back then, I... I would have spent the extra money and if it would have been available to me back then because there was no such thing as getting online and, and finding stuff and our little town, I don't figure it had anything that was organic, really, you, anything organic you grew yourself. But now we're able to and I buy my flour in bulk and I buy it off Amazon and I'll leave that link below, it's really good flour. Uh, comes in 25 pound bag and I deliver it right here to my front porch. Making your own bread, it takes quite a bit of flour. Now we all know that organic's not cheap, but I'll tell you what I do. I just do without other things so that I can buy a little bit more organic for my consumption goes into my body. So. That's just the way we have to do it. We do it without other things so that we can, you know, have our organic flour and stuff. But I'm gonna let this mix. It's gonna take just a little while for me to get eight cups in here. And uh, when I come back, I should have it all mixed up for you. Okay, I've said this in my other videos, making bread. You know, the recipe called for eight cups. It took seven cups today. That's why you put your your flour in uh, very slowly because if you put too much flour in, it'll make your, your dough tough. So what, it, what you watch for is when you're mixing it with that dough hook and it starts pulling away from the bowl and everything starts coming together, then you know you've got plenty of flour. So I'm going to put me some flour down here on my counter. And I want to get my dough out. 
and I'm just going to knead it for a couple minutes, not too long, just to bring it together. I love kneading bread. It's so therapeutic, I guess. I don't know. You also want to make sure that your raisins were distributed pretty good throughout the bread, too. You just need it for a couple minutes. And some of my raisins are falling out. Just stuff them back in there if they fall out. I've got my bread bowl over here, and I've got it buttered. You can oil it if you want to. I've got butter in mine. And this is going to make three loaves. And we're going to put it in a warm place. And I'm going to put mine in my oven with uh, the light on. And you want to leave them there probably about an hour and a half. Make sure that it's it's good and you know doubled in size. So I'm not going to over knead it. Stick some of them raisins back in there, and uh, bring my buttered bowl over. Stick it in there. I'm going to turn it once. And what you want to do, what they tell you to do, is to take a dish towel. So I'm going to take one that says to put warm water on it. So I've got my dish towel, warm water, and I'm going to put it over top of my bread, and I'm going to put it in my, my oven with the light on for an hour and a half, and uh, let it double in size. Then we'll come back and we'll make our loaves up. Okay guys, I'm fixing to take my, my dough out. It's been proofing for about an hour and a half. <clears throat> Mr. Brown and I have been out. Well, I've been cleaning on the back porch. We've been out in the garden just a little bit. He was cleaning the chicken house out. We went out and spread some of the chicken manure and the, chip, the pine shavings and stuff that we got out of it chicken house in uh, some of the garden beds. So we got that done. Let it sit throughout the rest of the winter. So I'm going to take my dough, put me a little flour out here. And there's, you don't need to really knead it anymore. And I'm going to take, let's see, let me get my big rolling pin. <laughs> I had this one out, but that was not good. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to roll this dough out the best I can. I want it in a rectangle because I want to get three loaves. It's going to be almost like uh, doing cinnamon rolls. You're going to get, roll it out to a rectangle. And uh, if it don't want to roll out for you very good, just stop rolling and just let it sit just a little bit. And then it'll get easier to roll out. And I love making cinnamon, homemade cinnamon rolls. I haven't made any in a while. I need to. But this is pretty much the concept, except you're going to make uh, three loaves of bread out of it. But you got to get that cinnamon swirl in there somehow. So this is how we're going to do it. Just roll it out. You want it about a half an inch thick, your dough. But you want it more in a rectangle than you do. Very wide. I have to move some of this stuff. It's been about uh, probably a little bit over 40 degrees today here in 
northeast Arkansas. So it's been a nice day. Sat it's a, it's Saturday, and uh, we were able to get outside, get maybe a few things done, <laughs> and it really felt good because I can tell you, we've been about two weeks without very much sunshine. Now we did get a pretty good snow, and it was really pretty. I loved it, but. Uh, we needed some sun. It's been really cold down in the, I think one night it might have got down to 14 maybe. And I know that's not cold for some people, but it is here in Arkansas, it's cold. I love Arkansas. The weather is very unpredictable, I can tell you. I do love it here. Um, the summertime is very hot. Now I can take the heat, but it's very humid too. <coughs> and the humidity really does a job on the garden. It, uh, it'll put mold on the squash leaves and everything else. So I'm just going to keep rolling until I can get it the length I need it. You just want to be able to make three loaves, you know, that are fit in here. So we got to go a little bit wider with it. Of course, they're going to rise and fit in your pan, so not that big deal. But we don't want to get too thin. Okay. I'm going to stop right now because I'm about to get it too thin. Okay. What I'm going to do is I've got some milk. Now, cinnamon rolls, you put butter here. We're not putting butter. This is bread. I'm going to be loaves of bread. So I'm sprinkling milk just on top of this. And I'm going to take my hand I'm just going to kind of sprinkle that milk around. And I'm going to spread it around. Just like this. Moisten the dough. Don't put too much. Now, I'm going to take some granulated sugar. I'm just going to kind of sprinkle the top. And I'm going to take, that was probably, um, I don't know, a couple of tablespoons probably. And I'm going to take my brown sugar, and this is a couple of tablespoons too. And I'm just going to sprinkle the top with my brown sugar. I believe I could have put more brown sugar on. In fact, I think I will. I don't want to put too much on there. I just want to make. I just want to get a. I like to make sure that it's contributed. You know, distributed good down through the whole dough. Just a little bit more. Okay, now I'm going to do my cinnamon. I'm just going to take a couple tablespoons. Sprinkle them down through there. Make sure you got it on there. Good. Some people like a lot of cinnamon. Some people don't like it so much. Some people can't eat it. Some people's allergic to it. That's sad. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll it like you would cinnamon rolls. <clears throat> you can take it this way, but I always take it 
towards me like this. You want it to roll it good, but you don't want it too tight because you want the middle to, to cook, not be doughy. Now I need to get three loaves out of this. I'm just going to try to even it out a little bit. Let's see. I'm not very good at this, but I'm going to cut it here. I'm going to cut it here. And I've got my low pans and I've got them buttered. And you can oil them or grease them, whichever you want to do. And I'm going to take the ends of my bread. And I'm going to pinch them and kind of roll them under. Just kind of pinch them together so that they're closed up. I'm going to put each one in my bread pan. Just pinch them and roll it under. I think this middle one's probably going to be a bigger loaf than my end ones. Just pinch them and roll them under. If you want to, you can kind of stretch it and work with it. It's unforgiving. It'll work. Put it in your loaf pan. And here's the last one. So I'm kind of goof it down that way. And I'm just going to take the end and I'm going to pinch it. I'm just going to pinch it and I'm just going to roll it under. Pinch this side and roll it under. I'm going to take it and put it in my bread pan. And I'm going to put this in a warm place, all three of them. And these need to rise another hour and a half. I'm going to put a hot, damp cloth over the top. That'll help the, the proof to proof them. Make them rise a little better. So, I'm going to get them in the, get them ready for that. And uh, we'll come back. We'll put them in the oven, and uh, now these need to proof again for at least another hour, and sometimes you may have to go for another hour half. It just depends on how warm your house is, and my house is warm today, so I'm going to put these in the oven, and we'll be back. Hey guys, this is my second proofing. I've got them in my loaf pans, got them in a warm oven with a light on, and I've got a, a hot, damp rag over the top. So I'm going to let them proof again for about, I don't know, probably an hour, an hour and a half. Then we'll be back. Okay guys, our bread has risen. It took about another hour and a half. And I'm just going to, I melted some butter. And I'm just going to spread some butter on top just to help it brown up on the top. And I got my oven preheating at 350. I'm going to put it in there and I'm going to check it at 30 minutes, but it should take at least 45. So I'm going to finish putting butter on these and I'm going to stick them in the oven and We'll check them here in about 30 minutes. The bread's done. It took about 45 minutes, and uh, it cooked up really pretty. And I've got me a, one of these bread slicers here, and this, this makes a world of difference when you're trying to slice bread. It's, a, it's by Norpro. I ordered it off Amazon. It wasn't really that bad expensive. I got a pretty good deal on it. And so far, I really like it. But let's cut a piece. You just line your knife up with it. I don't even know if you have to hold your bread, but I'm going to hold it. Now, I let my bread cool off a little bit first. You always need to let it cool off just a little bit before you cut it. But it's about that easy. But I want to show y'all. 
the inside of this bread. It's got a good swirl on it. It baked up really good. You see the raisins in there, and then you see the the cinnamon and the brown sugar swirl in the middle. And the texture of the bread is really good. This is going to be, make really good toast. So this will be a good good morning treat. But I love this bread slasher. Like I said, it's it's off Amazon. But you see how pretty it slices that bread up. Because a lot of time on homemade bread, it, uh, it's kind of hard to slice even slices. And this cuts even slices. It'll be about the right size to fit in your toaster. So the bread turned out really, really good. And I want to show y'all on the bottom. If you take your bread off, and I'm fixing to eat this bread. This comes off, so your crumbs that are collected on the bottom, you can just throw them out. So it's real easy to clean. So I'm going to get the toaster out, and let's toast up some bread. I want to show y'all how pretty that bread baked up. It done a really good job. But I'm going to stick a couple pieces in the toaster. And uh, we're going going to toast it up and put some butter on it. Okay, I'm going to taste it. I wish y'all could smell how good this smells. It's tender. Look at the crust. It's really crispy. This is really good. Mr. Brown, you want to bite? Sure. This is great. This is really good. Raisin cinnamon bread. Y'all have to try this recipe. Like I said, it's not hard. It makes three loaves. You know, the longest, the you know, the most time you're going to spend on these three loaves of bread is, you know, the time that they have to take to rise, but it's all worth it. So I've got two loaves I can put in the freezer, and we can take out at any time. But this is really, really good bread. So if y'all like this video, Give me a thumbs up, share it. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and uh, make you some bread. It's really good. God bless everybody. I want to show y'all my new uh, bread bags that I bought off Amazon when I bought my bread slasher too. They're linen bags and uh, you put your homemade bread in it. Uh, to keep it fresh, and that way you don't have to wrap it in plastic bags or full or anything. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to first I'm going to wrap it in some wax paper, and then I'll put it inside these pretty little linen bag. I really like them. I, they're they're made really well, and they got the little drawstring at the end. And uh, I don't know. This will be my first time of trying it. I'm going to try it and see how well it keeps the bread fresh. And uh, I'll let you know if it does or not. If it does a very good job. But you just put it in there and pull your drawstring tight. and You can leave your bread on your counter. I thought it was pretty neat.